Hi right, guys, what's up? I just pulled up to my shop and I've got some parts in there that I'm pretty excited to show you. Let me show you what I got. All right guys, so here it is. Just got into the shop and we are crammed wall to wall with this trailer. Um, that's because I've got a body on it. Um, so the Jeep's getting a body swap. Um, surprise. And I just got this back from a body shop locally and had a few rust repair pieces done to it um these are some moto built inner highline fenders that i'm really excited about those are in there um let's see i've got the floor has been redone completely and um all the rust repair uh the body mounts got redone a couple patches got put in and it's this thing is pretty solid now. The body was in really good shape. Not really any problems with it. The body mounts were kind of rusted out. That was the only big issue. So, pretty happy with it. All right, so yeah, I'm doing a body swap. Um, didn't really plan on this, but the aluminum work that I did to the rear of the Jeep, the frame out and everything like that. It's had a couple issues and I figured why not start fresh. <laughs> a body was cheap enough to go ahead and get my hands on. And now that I'm doing all this work to it, it's gonna be done right. And that's my goal is to get this thing done right and done once and so that I'm not gonna have any more issues. So first thing I got for the Jeep other than those moto built fenders are this. My buddies over at Steel It sent me not one, but two gallons of their Steel It that is gonna come out of a spray gun. I've got their compressor, so I'm gonna try to find a good spray gun for this. And this thing is getting coated top to bottom, done right, all in gray Steel It. So I'm gonna take this thing uh, this morning. I'm gonna head off to a place in Orlando that does dustless blasting. And I'm going to drop this body off. So basically we're going to blast the body. We're going to prep it right. We're going to coat it and steel it. And then from there we're going to start to throw some new parts at it. Um, I've actually got uh, a box right here that I'm pretty excited about from, you know, Moto Built. Um, so that's got some parts in it I'm going to put on. Uh, I've got a fresh hood right here. I've got a fresh grill and a windshield kind of hiding those um basically i'm gonna throw everything at it coat it the right way and um do it once and do it right got back picked up the body from uh dustless blasting and it turned out great i'm gonna show you guys real quick but i've been working on a paint booth inside the shop and it is massive <laughs> it takes up uh pretty much the whole shop um yeah <laughs> there's not really a good way to show you how big this thing is it basically covers the entire shop um, it's like eight feet tall by like 15 feet long. So it's, uh, it's pretty big. I've got, uh, booth here. Pretty simple. Nothing big to it. Got a little fan with a filter. So that should help keep some of the, the paint vented out. I'm probably going to have to put in another fan or filter in the back because this thing vacuums down when it's sealed and uh, that doesn't that doesn't help at all. So 
yeah, there's the uh, the body out there. I'm going to uh, unload that here in just a minute. Get it in here, start cleaning it. Uh, I've got uh, a bottle of acetone. I'm going to just hit it and uh, pretty much wipe everything down, get it all prepped for steel it, and uh, start testing a couple pieces with a spray gun and seeing how it works. Got the, uh, the body here into the paint booth and I didn't film it, but I just been scrubbing it down pretty much all, of, all day today. Uh, wiped everything down with acetone and uh, got it all cleaned up. So this is it. Uh, the blasting guys did a real good job. It gives it a nice uh, rough finish. Uh, the steel it loves that. So that's what's gonna happen. Fixing to spray it. Um, I ended up, I ran that vent fan up front and uh, it kind of sucked this whole thing down, had a good vacuum, so I hooked up my other fan with an air filter, that way uh, we don't get any dust in here, uh, keeps it kind of clean. It's really clean in here, um, I don't really have any, any dirt or dust, it stays really clean, so I think that's going to work out really well. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna go mix up the uh, the paint, get my spray gun ready, and uh, yeah, I'll show you exactly what we're gonna be doing. All right, guys. So before I go ahead and dig into this and start spraying and get even more hot than I already am in this little sweat box, um, I'm gonna go over what exactly I'm doing, what I'm using, and why I'm using it. So this is Steel It. It is a polyurethane-based uh, coating. It is um, this is gray. Uh, it comes in gray and black. So the 316 stainless in it uh, actually makes a very durable bond. Uh, the more stainless you get on it, the more complete uh, coverage you have. So that just forms a barrier over what you're trying to protect. In this case, it's this Jeep for me. So I'm wanting to protect this body as much as I can. So still it's the, uh, the product of choice to protect this investment that I've got. So. Basically what we're going to do, uh, the Jeep is already prepped. I've been in here cleaning it down all day long. I'm probably going to give it another once over and wipe a little bit more residue off of it just to make sure everything's good. Um, this was a brace of blasted. I took it to a dustless blasting place in Orlando and they cleaned it up for me in a day and uh, relatively inexpensive for in, you know in terms of blasting. So really happy with that. It gives it a nice gritty finish. It uh, feels kind of like sandpaper, like 100 grit, 120 grit sandpaper. So that's the kind of uh, prep work you want to do. You want a nice rough finish so that the paint can bond to it. Um, the paint gets coated in probably, in my case, I think I'm thinking about four coats, uh, four thick wet coats, uh, covers the entire thing. And that will give me enough bond with the stainless to protect the Jeep. Uh, as well as give it enough stainless so that I can weld through it if I have to. So a couple key features with steel it. Uh, you have a very durable product and it's a corrosive so it's going to help protect against rust. Uh, the, the stainless in it creates a tough barrier so it's any abrasive. It's going to really resist any kind of abrasions that you're going to run into. With this Jeep body I know I'm going to run into some. In the last couple of years I've, I've put it through some abuse so I want to go ahead and do it right, do it again, and um, and really protect this body because I'm doing this one right. So steel is going to be a great choice for that. Um, another key feature is the stainless in it, which is going to not only create that barrier um, to protect against abrasions, but it's also going to give me a surface that I can weld through. So 
if I bash this body and put a big dent in it and I can't repair it or put a hole in it somehow or anything like that, I can go ahead and get a sheet of metal and I can cut it out and I can patch it right up. I don't have to clean the, the, the body up at all. I can weld right through it. Um, it just makes it really easy to touch up. That's why I coat my axes in it because any brackets get broken. Those things seem see the most abuse because they hang down long. So any kind of damage they get, a bracket breaks, uh, anything like that. You can see right through it. You can see clear to the weld. It's a very clean finish. You can see any imperfections, any damage you get, and you can touch it up right through the paint. So spray gun. Um, I've just got a cheap Harbor Freight gun. It's probably about 50 bucks, and this is the complete setup. I got a regulator put on it. That way I can get the, the pressure exactly where I want. Got a filter on it just to get all the water and, and dust out of it. Uh, if there is any in the, in the compressor, the shop is pretty dusty, so it's sucking in a lot of dirty air. So I've got a couple filters in line uh, between this and on the compressor just to try to keep it clean. Um, the biggest thing with steel it is because it's so thick, um, nozzle size. You're going to want to try to get a bigger nozzle. Um, their application guide calls for, depending on what kind of gun you have, anywhere in the 1.7 to 2.5 mm uh, millimeter range. This is a 1.8. It's the biggest I could find at Harbor Freight without buying a $200 gun. I think this is going to work fine. I've talked to a couple other people that have used very similar setup to this and it's done pretty well. So I'm going to get this going, fill this up and run a couple test runs on some, uh, some test pieces outside and go ahead and get a feel for the gun, feel for the pressure, kind of dial things in a little bit uh, just to get it where I want it so that it can lay down smooth. Alright guys, so a couple things I did here. Um, just wanted to show the inside of these inner fenders from Motobuilt. These are their Highline inner fenders. And these actually get spot welded along the entire seam. Um, and it comes with this inner panel and the top and front panel, all is one. Um, that pretty much just gets spot welded in. I went a little bit above and beyond and welded everything in solid. I wanted to seal it, so might as well. We've got a couple stitch welds down in here, and once I flip it over, you'll see the other side. The other side's uh, completely welded all the way around, ground smooth. The floor pan, to pull these out, uh, the fenders out, you have to basically drill out all the spot welds. So if you've got all the spot welds out for each side of the fenders, you're halfway there to having the floor out. So my floor had a couple rust spots in it and instead of paying somebody to fix the rust repair all I did was replace the, the floor pan. It's a 16 gauge, it's about a 3x3 three three. and uh, it kind of just goes right in where the, uh, the factory spot welds are. Another thing I did, the body mounts. These are uh, just a body mount replacement I got off of Quadratech. Drill out the spot welds and spot weld it right back in. Nothing to it. So these were all rusted out. The, uh, the body mounts were actually caved in um, with rust and, and corroded out. So that was not going to work. So those got replaced. They look pretty good. I think they're going to hold up. Um, other than that, I just did a couple little patches here and there. Everything came out really good. I think it's going to be a solid body for me. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start spraying. And once I get it sprayed, I'll flip it over. That way you can see what I did on the inside. forgot to include one thing um, this is the paint sprayer that I actually ended up using this is an airless sprayer from Harbor Freight it's uh, it's nothing fancy it's actually their old discontinued model but I had this from helping my parents spray their house a couple years ago and uh, this is all I had uh, the spray gun that I did have with the uh, the actual spray gun for paint um, didn't really work out um, I couldn't get enough pressure out of it I couldn't even with the regulator on it I couldn't get enough pressure I don't have a huge compressor 
Um, I just, I, it wouldn't work for me. Um, when you don't have enough pressure, the steel, it doesn't atomize right. And I think it was a nozzle too. It wasn't quite big enough. Um, it just doesn't atomize right and break up so that the paint lays down good. It actually lays down rough and kind of ripply. Um, it has uh, almost, almost like it's got dirt in it, um, but it didn't come out that great. So I had this, it was sitting in the corner of the shop. I broke it out and that thing ate through the paint like no tomorrow. So I only got two coats. I think it's gonna be plenty. I wanted to do about three or four, but with as much paint as came out, I'm not too worried about it. Um, that ate through the paint like it was nothing and it sprayed down really nice. So I just kind of had to feather the trigger a little bit and kind of watch how much came out and tried to, to lay down the coats evenly. So it ended up working out great. So I was impressed with this because this was you know less than 200 bucks at Harbor Freight a couple years back. So now they got a couple other models out that I'm sure will work. So this, this actually worked out great. guys it's been about three hours four hours since I laid down uh, both of my coats of steel it on the body and man let me show you this this finish came out so good laying it out of a can is one thing but man when you spray this stuff out of a gallon it lays down so nice so smooth finish looks great it's nice and smooth it's already dry to the touch this is the rear obviously came out great finish is fantastic cannot say enough good stuff about Staley guys this was one gallon by the way the body got two full coats, two thick wet coats with uh, one gallon, and that was a little excessive. The spray gun I'm using really paint, pumps out the paint, so this is really thick, but it should be good because the underside is coated good. The outside, they got two coats out here. We've got two coats, and when I flip over the body to paint the rest, I can end up giving it a third coat if I want. For only two coats, I was really surprised how it laid down. I've not done uh, a lot in bulk. The, uh, the spray gun out of a gallon, but came out fantastic. Cannot say enough good about stealing. This finish turned out super nice. I can't be any happier with how it came out. I'm super pumped to get the rest of this Jeep sprayed. The inside is gonna look fantastic once it's all done. All the new parts, these moto built fenders are gonna look great coated and steal it. I'm just, I'm really excited to show you guys uh, the, the other side once I get it done.
All right, guys, that's a wrap. I've got everything painted. I came back this morning and got two more coats of steel it on the inside of the Jeep. I flipped it over last night and got uh, everything else finished up. I know you can't see it right now. I've got the shop pretty much closed up, fans running. Uh, I'm gonna let it dry for most of the day and then I'll come back tonight and uh, just kind of turn everything off and let it dry for the next couple days. But I'll show you guys in a little while what everything looks like, how it looks after it's dried, and uh, how it turned out. Alright guys, it is Friday afternoon and to give you a time perspective on this whole process, I started this video on Monday morning taking this body to sandblasting. So Monday it got blasted, Tuesday it came back uh, and prepped, Wednesday I sprayed, Thursday I sprayed and today has just kind of been a clean up and let it cure day. I am really happy with the results that I got with uh, almost two full gallons of steel it. I still got a little bit left in uh, one of my gallons, which I'm going to save for repainting my hood, a grill, another windshield frame. Uh, I might need another quart to do all that, but I shouldn't need a whole lot. And uh, so this was two coats, very thick coats, and uh, that was um, almost two gallons. So I think you could say easily two gallons per body. <laughs> for for a jeep like this so that's and that's just the body this is this is nothing else uh it took two gallons to do the paint sprayer i'm using is an airless it's a fully electric um just a harbor freight gun and it comes with the pump and everything you just drop the siphon into the gallon and go to town and let me tell you that thing pumps out the paint like crazy um i had to really kind of feather the the trigger a little bit and slow myself down um, so that I didn't blow through all the paint really quick. Um, but as you can see, turned out great. Um, I couldn't be happier with the results. Huge thanks to the guys over at Steal It. Uh, Brian from Big Designs helping me set everything up. Um, really appreciate those guys. And uh, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of Steal It coming, but I think that pretty much wraps up the entire process. I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Uh, Basically, recap of the video, we talked about prepping for Steel It, sandblasting the body, um, everything that Steel It does and the benefits of it, uh, the coating process, painting everything, and then now the most important, important part is cure time. So I've actually got my trailer right out there and I'm fixing to load this body up onto the trailer and take it to my other storage shed right around the corner and I'm gonna let it sit in there for about a week and just kind of bake and let the, the paint cure, let the, uh, the steel it do its thing, and, uh, and then I'll end up getting the body back in here to do some more work to it. So thank you guys for watching Recoil Off-Road. Please subscribe to the channel, give it a share. Um, I think the first video did really well, considering you know, this is my first one. So thank you everybody that's watching and subscribing. Please give it a share and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you guys.